My first Lynx I had rugged and uh, I thought that was just pretty neat and then when I actually bought this trap line that I'm on now I needed to come up with some cash and I sold a bunch of stuff and, and uh, you know a lot of people were kind of like well why would you sell that when it's your first and I still got memories of it still got pictures of it so my dad always used to tell me I remember when I was a kid I'd I bought a bow uh, actually my dad and I bought this bow at a gun show for and talk, dad talked the guy down to $47 and uh, it was a Darton trail trail master or hunt master something like that anyway uh, so when when I started out shooting my dad with it, uh, he made me buy him out on it. And uh, anyway, when I was in college, everybody was shooting sights and, and uh, releases, and I was shooting fingers and no sights. And, and, but they were shooting these ridiculous groups, and I'm like, holy cow, you know? And if I could keep them all in the pie plate, that was my effective range and I was happy with that. But these guys, I mean, that one kid I went to college with from Pennsylvania, he was shooting, when we were shooting grouse with our bows, he was shooting their heads. And I'm like, wow, I couldn't do that. But it was with my compound. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's still too big for me. It's got about a 33 inch draw length on the dang thing. And, and uh, when I was a kid, I think I was 13 when I got it. It would, I think it was 50 pounds it would go down to, but I'd sit there with it on my foot, put the handle on my foot and grab that string and I'd, till I could pull that thing. So, and what's really funny is when I went to college then I had a little job and saved up some money and bought a new Hoyt. And uh, when I come home, I came home with a friend of mine from college and we were deer hunting and dad seen that new bow. What's that? I, said, oh, I bought a new bow. Did you sell the other one? I said, no. He says, why not? I said, that's my first bow. I killed my first deer with that. It's sentimental value. And my dad's a little bit harsh and he says, uh, sentimental value don't pay the bills. And I don't know, $20 doesn't either. So. But anyway, I still have that bow, and uh, I still shoot it once in a while. It's kind of funny, but it's pretty neat when you're shooting the new stuff. And, I mean, and then you go to go back and shoot this. I, I mean, I got a couple recurves that are faster than that compound. So this old round wheel. I still haven't caught a uh, caught a uh, a wolf in one of those 850s yet either. So I caught that coyote earlier in the year, and if I wouldn't have welded that dog on, it would have ate it. I took it right off. I mean, he had it wrapped around, and never really seen that with with coyotes. But that dog on that 850 is pretty little. So you guys that are playing with them. Uh, make sure you weld them dogs. You got, I had a, a Mason, a kid from Montana that uh, ordered the traps from me and he sent me a picture of his chain set up and I told him, look good except for weld them, weld them swivels. So, and you'll get, you get all kinds of people at, get on there when you're talking about traps and saying this trap's good and this trap's, you know, this trap will hold a wolf and all these guys that have trapped for years, trapping coyotes, you know, and caught wolves. And the reason that you're holding that wolf, most of the time it's because it's a pup and those pups don't really fight it. And you can tell that by 
they're not chewing. But, and another thing is the, your trap check time. So when you start checking your traps every 24 hours, um, that, that'll save you. But if you, you leave a big adult wolf in a trap, he's gonna find the weaknesses in them and, and, uh, and be gone. So um, yeah, those number three bridgers that I use for coil, but they're highly modified. Um, yeah, I've held several wolves in them, but they've been pups. And uh, it's kind of my, my favorite Wolverine cat set, uh, cat trap is what it is, um, but it's modified. Offset laminated jaws, four coil, and uh, just a super efficient trap. Some of you I've met, this Alaska John on there, so he was down here. I met, went and did a wolf seminar down in Montana. Oh, it's been a few years ago now. I met him and his grandson down there. It's, it's kind of cool, so uh, I've had a journal on Trapper Man for quite a few years, and you get to uh, talking with guys on that, and, and uh, just chatting back and forth with each other, and then that's kind of how I think I got to go down to Idaho and Montana to do some wolf seminars, and, and then to meet a bunch of those guys that are on on Trapper Man, you know, and now friends with them. That was it was pretty neat. And through the uh, what was really really neat uh, when I had cancer, I was down in Minnesota in the uh, in Mayo Clinic. And one of the guys from Trapper Man that had been following my journal stopped by, I guess called my sister, because she had posted something on Trapper Man. And uh, anyway, so he called my sister and then and actually came by and seen me. So that was pretty neat. And, uh, and then when I went to Idaho, I met all them guys, Justin Webb, and you know, I talked with him on Facebook and and uh, sent traps down to him for donations for the Foundation for Wildlife Management. Rusty Kramer, yeah, it was pretty neat to meet them guys. So, uh, <coughs> so you can see when, when I was skinning and I get to the neck, I start to do a lot more clean skinning because it's it's tough to get that uh, that grisly neck. So but you have to split them or, or it'll spoil and it'll slip. So, and I've seen those arguments on the internet before and a lot of guys um, do different things, but when they sell them, you don't see the end result unless you're tanning them or unless you know the guys that are buying them, but most guys that are shipping like to fur auctions and stuff like that, you don't see the end result, so um, you don't know what you're doing is right. And uh, yeah, I, that's not really right. But you don't, 
you don't see the end result. So a lot of people say, well, I never do it. I've never had one slip. Well, you never had it slip when you were drying it. But when it went through the tanning process, that's when it slipped. So, um, but yeah, so you just gotta pay attention to that. Do everything you can to, to be a professional. And so, but like I showed you guys, I'm doing them both feet. You know what, maybe I should, uh, maybe I will. I'll get the, uh, the head, head mount, yep, right there. And I'll put that on. I'm thinking it. I'm going to show you guys that bow. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, pretty neat. The old Darton, and those are Eastern Game Getter uh, 2116s. Now are they 2216s? Twenty-one seventeen. sorry, with an old clicky quiver on it, super loud quiver, but, and I shoot it off uh, an old flipper rest, no sight, um, it's, it's still super fun to shoot, but I'll show you guys what I've been doing outside. So I moved all my boats and, and trailers out drug them out here, shovel them off, had my buddy Bruce over to help with a few of them, and then uh, pushed everything in with the loader, cleaned out where the roof slid off the shop, cleaned all down my fence, pushed all that back into the float pond, and getting ready uh, for spring, I guess. And then I've got that big ramp. I don't think I ever showed you guys my ramp, but I had a ramp right there behind the basketball that I build out of snow every year and that's how I load without using my metal ramps. But I'll show you how much snow. <laughs> oh. See the snow off that rough right there. That's 12 foot. <laughs> so, yeah. But we're supposed to get some snow again tonight, which is, we really don't need. So, this is our, our stage for uh, the fur auction. This is, I bring this in there and that's what we use to put our uh, our, our uh, fur hangers on and we got a big rack that goes on it. This is a friend of mine's little mini loader. So when you're in it, you feel like you're in a big loader, but you're, 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 you look like you're in a Tonka toy, but it does really well, so.